We did not expect how much we would be enriched by the people that we would meet along the way. We are very open people and very friendly people. And so we were so excited to meet other RVers. Are you an RV person? Or are you just RV life curious, wondering how people live in a tiny space with their family 24-7? Either way, this is a podcast for you. My name is Kate White, and I travel full-time with my family and two kids and the dog in an RV. Every week, I sit down with a fellow RV woman to learn why she chose RV life and how she has changed on the road. Pull a chair up to the fire, and let's chat. Hello, my friends and fellow RV queens. This is Kate White, your host, coming at you from a hotel bedroom, (laughs) which those of you who are watching this podcast on YouTube can see behind me. Oh, that's right. We are staying in a hotel because we have yet another RV repair. Uh, So our little RV home is in the shop right now. Today, I got the honor of interviewing Lauren Grijalva. I believe I pronounced her name correctly. Uh, She is the woman behind the Wonderpreneurs who have been full-time RVing since 2018. And she is a wealth of knowledge and one of those really just generous people who give great tips on how to do everything RVing and RV life. She is so persuasive about inviting people to be full-time RVers that she talked her sister, Wendy, into becoming a full-time RVer with her family. She was on the podcast last, last week, so check that episode out if you haven't yet. And also her husband's brother's family has become full-time RVers since they hit the road. <laughs> She's also traveled internationally with her family and written an ebook all about how to get into full time RV life if you're wanting to, you know, get hit the road and break the norm with the rest of us. I really enjoyed this conversation. I think you will too. Let's get into it. Hello, Lauren, and welcome to the RV Queens podcast. How are you today? I'm good. Thanks so much for having me. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for coming on. Where are you these days? So we are currently in Southern California. We're going to be here for the entire fall season so that our kids can play sports. We're currently in the mountains and it's cooler temperatures up here. It's really beautiful. So we're loving being here right now. Oh, I love that. Is it pretty hot in August in Southern Florida? We, we escaped for a week up to the mountains where it's higher elevation. So it's actually really nice where we are this week. But then next week we go back down uh, where it's going to be hot again. <laughs> well, you are a total like RV living ambassador. Like you've written a book, which we'll talk about later. Um, you have an e-course, like helping people get into this lifestyle. And you've even talked your family members into also being full-time RVers. Um, the the episode before this was Wendy, your sister, um, with the Glamp Life Rug Company. Um, so that was a super fun conversation. So I love that <laughs> I'm having you guys back to back. And I'll ask you a few more questions about that in a little bit. But I would love to start, you know, back in, you guys started traveling back in 2018, um, full time in your RV. So, so paint the picture for us. Like, what was your life like? before then leading up to that? um, And why were you looking for a change as drastic as going full time in an RV? So before that, we had a good life. We lived um, in a nice house in a nice neighborhood. Our kids went to public school and their school was very a really good school. But um, we started feeling like we were getting really, really busy. Um, Aaron and I both owned our own businesses. And so we were working a lot and the kids were in sports and we had all these commitments. And we just found ourselves being pulled apart more and more and just become in- becoming increasingly busy. So... I had two friends that were full-time RVers that I kind of watched on social media. And I just got this crazy idea. What if we did this just for a year? It was just going to be a year to hit the reset button, kind of grow back together as a family and get back into the things that we truly loved, which was spending time outdoors and biking and swimming and hiking. And we were just finding ourselves with less and less time to do those things. So we decided we didn't have any RV experience whatsoever. We had never RVed in our lives, but we decided to buy an RV, buy a truck to pull it with. um, And we put our house up for rent 
found a renter, but we told our renter, you know, we're only going to be gone for a year. So don't get too comfortable. We're coming back. And what turned into what was supposed to be a one year trip just turned into a lifestyle that we could never give up. It just proved to be even better than we imagined. And five years later, there's no end in sight. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So tell us, walk us through some of the practical parts of, um, you know, moving out of your house and you have two kids, right? Any pets on the way? Like in this whole mix? Okay. I mean, just two kids alone. That's a lot. Um, downsizing things from a house. Were there job changes that had to occur? Like how, how did you just flip the switch and all of a sudden, (laughs) <laughs> living in an RV. Yeah. yeah, it was a lot. And but we're doers. When we put our mind to something, we get it done. And I'm glad that we're like that. We didn't prolong it. We didn't drag it out. We had this conversation in August and we hit the road in November. We had gotten rid of all of our stuff. We had put our house on the market, you know, for rent. We had sold both of our cars because we just had cars. Um, and it's funny, we did, we literally got rid of all of our stuff. It, a lot of people keep a storage unit, which doesn't really make sense because we said we were coming back. But I think in the back of my mind, I kind of knew. I don't know, we might just not come back. And so we sold everything. And that was quite a process. It's a hard um, you know, it's a lot of work. We had yard sales, multiple yard sales. We were donating a ton of stuff and just downsizing our lives. But at the same time, while it was a lot of work, it was so freeing to just get rid of all these things that we didn't need in the first place. So yeah, yeah. that was a lot of work. And then, um, Aaron owned his own company, uh, doing digital marketing. So he was able to easily transition to working from the road. So he did that. And then I was a professional photographer who had local clients. I did um, family portraits. Uh, I would photograph events, things like that. And I did have to tell my local clients, I'm leaving for a year, um, but I will be back. And so I wasn't really sure what I was going to do on the road or how I would make money on the road. We were just going to rely on his income and our lifestyle was going to be you know, cheaper than it was living in a house so that we were able to do that. But thankfully, um, shortly after we hit the road, I had been really documenting the whole downsizing process, buying our RV. We had started building up a following, and I just kept documenting everything. I started a travel blog, and a lot of opportunities came out of that that ended up being my uh, replacement of income. So I started creating content. I started writing articles for different RV websites. I started licensing photography uh, that I was taking around the country and partnering with brands on social media. So that replaced my income, which was really nice. And it was unexpected. I didn't know that was going to happen. That's awesome. Good for you. So you guys are both working from the road. I mean, creating content and writing writing blogs and that whole thing. That's that is uh, a lot of work um, that I think sometimes I only mention that because sometimes I think people are like, oh, content creators. And it's like, no, that's like actual work that you're it's time consuming and, you know, a lot behind the scenes. So how did homeschooling your kids fit into this? Like, were you guys already homeschooling and kind of familiar or was that another just like full immersion? We're just going to figure this out on the road. <laughs> Yeah, we were not homeschoolers before. My kids were both in public school and I pulled them out. Callista had just started kindergarten. Kaysen was in second grade and I think they had got, you know, it was November. They had just started school not too long ago. And we told them, we're going to pull you out and we're going to figure out homeschooling and just for a year. And we did. We pulled them out. I had no idea what I was doing, but we figured it out. It, it, it Still, every year, our homeschooling approach changes a little bit. We just learn about the places we go, about the animals we're going to, that that we're seeing in our travels, the culture. Um, We just learn a lot about, you know, firsthand experiences, national parks, things like that. Um, And then, of course, we do, um, we have a math uh, program that we do, and we work on other things like that, too. But we really keep it interesting. And I'm preparing for this upcoming school year, just making a list, sitting down with the kids and saying, what do you guys want to learn about this year? We're going to do a study on world religions, on entrepreneurship, and just, you know, I feel like we're able to give them um, a very well-rounded, just exciting way to learn because of our life style, which is really cool. Remind me, like, where did you guys start from as far as location in the country? We were in Georgia. So we were living in a suburb of Atlanta. Okay. And then did you 
go up the East Coast and around like within that first year? Or what was your approach then? And then how has that um, kind of morphed over the years? Yeah. So our first um, goal to, was to get to the West Coast. So we left in November and we wanted to be in California by Christmas because my husband was born and raised in California and we, we had not seen his family in a while. So we were so excited to make our way out West and have Christmas with family in California. And so that's what we did. We took the Southern route. Our first stop was Gulf Shores, Alabama. We went through Louisiana. We um, went through Southern Texas. We Our first national park was Big Bend National Park, which we fell in love with. That sparked our love for national parks. And we just kept going until we got to California. And then, yeah, after that, I think... Um, we, I think we probably stayed in Southern California that first winter. And then when it got spring, we started making our way up the West coast and we've just gone all over the place now. Just, you know, we, we still haven't seen everything. We have a big gap on our travel map in the Northeast. Um, we were set to do that in spring and summer of 2020 and that's when everything shut down. So we still have to make it over to the Northeast and mark off all those states up there, which we'll get to one day. I don't know when because we really love the West and we spend a lot of time out here, but one day we'll make it out there. And we do hope to fill in every state and see every state. Tell me about your travel style. You like to travel quick um, or take your time in each place or how does that go? It's changed a lot through the years. In the beginning, we were moving really fast. We thought we had one year to see the United States. And once we started going, you know, after that first year, we realized we're not stopping. We're going to, so that gave us a little freedom to slow down a little bit, which was nice. And the longer we're on the road, the more we do slow to take it slow, which is, uh, it's just the best fit for our family, I think. And we've even moved more towards seasonal travel at this point. Um, like I mentioned earlier, we're here in Southern California for the entire fall season for our kids to play sports. They missed playing sports when we were traveling so fast. So we said, okay, every fall we will stay put in one location and sign you up for local sports. And that's worked out really well for us. So we like to you know, do fall sports and then um, Baja Mexico is our winter home. We actually purchased some property down there. So we have a place to go Ooh. every winter, which we absolutely love. And, um, and then in the spring and summers, we kind of just go wherever. Uh, yeah, we've, we've actually, uh, only traveled maybe nine or 10 months at this point. And we're already seeing like why people do the seasonal thing and take time to really like slow down, especially in the winter. Um, Sports is one of those reasons, but then also just kind of having, I don't even know what it is. Even though you live in an RV and we love traveling, like being able to look forward, which is just having like some downtime in one spot and kind of like collect our thoughts and wrap our mind around the upcoming, you know, several months. So um, I'm not surprised that's kind of like what you gravitated to because you've been on the road five years now. Uh and I'm also curious about um, your favorite places. You, you like being out west. Where out west have you returned to over and over? It just never gets old. So one of our favorite places is Yosemite National Park. We um, love Yosemite. We love Lake Tahoe. We love southern Utah, all the national parks out there. Um, we love Glacier National Park. We love northern California. And we spend a lot of time in Southern California because that's where we have a ton of family. And we love we love all of California. So, I mean, really, all of our favorite places are out West. And, um, yeah, those are – and, oh, and Southwest Colorado. We love Southwest Colorado. That is a great summer destination. Okay, so tell me about um, talking your family members into becoming full-time RV people. Like, you must be very persuasive and have a really powerful story about – life on the road? Like how did, how did that happen? Well, I mean, like I said, we just have documented everything along the way. And our, of course our family members were watching us. Um, I think my sister, Wendy will probably tell you, she probably thought we were a little crazy when we first told her about the idea. But I think once she started seeing our adventures and seeing how our kids were thriving and our family was growing closer, it is inspirational to see people do something different and thrive in that. And so, um, before she, she became a full-time RVer. 
my husband, Aaron is a twin and his twin brother and his family, um, same thing. They got inspired and they decided to hit the road. So they have three little boys and we have traveled with them multiple times, which is just so sweet for the cousins to just, I mean, to be neighbors, you know, um, all around the country. It's just a really special thing. We haven't been able to meet up with my sister, Wendy yet. She's been out East the whole time. And, and the whole time she's been on the road, we've been out West. So we're just waiting for when our paths will cross and we can work that out. But it's really cool to have two siblings doing exactly what we do. That is so crazy. So you guys seem pretty family, you know, really connected with your, obviously your nuclear family and then also extended. Um, How do you break up time as far as holidays go and special time of year, like between California and you're from Georgia originally, right? Um, Do you, I mean, just alternate years or how does how does that work for your family? That would be hard just because we're from opposite coasts. I mean, it's a lot to drive your home all the way across the country. So what we found is that my parents are retired and they really enjoy traveling and seeing new places. So instead of us going back to Georgia so often, they have flown out to, I don't know how many times. I mean, they've seen us when we were in Vegas. They have come and visit us when we were in Glacier National Park, they they we explored Yellowstone together. We've done a lot of really cool trips with my parents that enables them to travel and for us to visit with them. And then we like we spend a lot of time in Southern California where Aaron is from. And then my sister's on the road now, so we're just gonna have to coordinate, you know, um, meeting up. And then my other sister lives in the Netherlands, and we're actually going to Europe. Uh, we were in Europe this past spring, and we're actually going to spend a few months there this spring without the RV. And we'll get to meet up with her. So it's just making, you know, when, when a lot of your family travels too, it's really cool. You just kind of meet up all over the place, which is cool. That is amazing. So your other sister's in the Netherlands was, and you're going to go visit her, and you've traveled internationally with your family. Um, Did that sister persuade you to come across the pond, as they say, or were you guys already thinking of international travel even without your sister being over there? Yeah, she actually went. Okay, so this past spring, we went to Europe for four months, actually. And while we were there, she just decided to pack up her life in Atlanta and move. They went to to, um, Amsterdam for a one year, uh, or I'm sorry, a one month. They got an Airbnb for a month. They loved it. They found out the Airbnb was for sale. They asked if they could buy it. And so they bought that. So while we were in Greece, they bought a house in the Netherlands and they're living there now. And it didn't work out for us to visit them uh, this spring. But next spring, we already knew we were going back to Europe. I was like, okay, we're coming to see you. So I guess travel just runs in our family's blood. (laughs) Did you guys travel with Boundless Life? Yes, that's why we were in Europe. So we, the kids had an education program in Greece. We had a co-working space. They set us up with a, it was an incredible experience. I would highly recommend anybody that is able to do that to, to go to Boundless Life. And that's why we're going back this next spring. We're going to go to Portugal with Boundless Life. And like, I feel like as RVers, it's been really easy for us to build community on the road because there are so many other RV families and we stay at these campgrounds where we know other families are going to be. But if you want to do international travel, it can be harder to build community um, as you travel, especially with kids. And so this program is so great because there were, you know, a handful of other families there just like us. So we were able to immerse ourselves in this culture and do it with other families. So I highly recommend checking them out if, um, you know, if that is something that you're interested in, because we had an absolutely uh, incredible experience with them. That was so cool. I didn't realize that was part of the program, like the the built-in community. I knew they set you up with, well, you described the setup. It's like you get an apartment, your kids are kind of in school together? And then how does it work day to day? Yeah. So, I mean, you are there, you come on a certain date along with, I'm trying to think of how many families were there, maybe 12 other families and you, you all meet each other. They, they have a welcome event where everyone meets each other and your houses are all within walking distance. You just walk everywhere. So it's just a bit, it was very similar to like the RV community, how there's so much downtime to have casual conversations and really get to know your neighbors. And I feel like in the regular world, that's more rare. Um, So this was brand new for a lot of the families we were with. And we said, well, this is kind of what we get with RV life. 
but not overseas. This is so special to have this overseas. So the kids went to an education program Monday through Friday, um, just like they would go to school here, but it was way better than normal school. I mean, there were a lot of group projects, a lot of field trips. Um, so it wasn't exact. I mean, it definitely wasn't like school. It was a much richer uh, experience, I believe. Um, and then there was a co-working space. So on days we needed to work, we went there, but they had all these activities planned for us, like group yoga sessions and group hikes and things like that. So it was very community oriented and it was a lot of fun. Oh my gosh. That sounds amazing. Uh, we've, we had another guest, Mel Lar on. Um, I don't know if you know her, Yes, but she, she has done the boundless life as well. And she just sung its praises, (laughs) sang its praises, sung its praises, (laughs) (laughs) whatever that word is. That's so cool. Um, and I've also talked with a lot of RV women that are now, they've been traveling for years in the, in the U S and are now looking towards international travel. And it's such a cool, like kind of transitionary um program you know instead of just going out there and making your own itinerary and kind of feeling alone it seems like it would be a really good fit (laughs) um to immerse yourself totally in a culture for a while um okay so tell us about this ebook you have coming out like what was what's it about and why did you decide to write this. So the title is Your Complete Roadmap to Becoming a Full-Time RVer. It's a big title, but we needed all the words in there so people would know what they were getting. It stemmed from the question that we get most often, how do I do what you're doing? And it's always so hard to answer that. It's like, that's a very loaded question. How do I don't know what your circumstance is. And so I said, you know what? Why don't it started off? I was just going to write an article. I was like, I'm just going to list out the things that people need to know and consider and think about if they want to become a full time RV. But there was just so much information. And I, it, the article kept getting longer and longer. My husband was like, what if we make this into an (laughs) ebook and that you do chapters? I was like, Oh, that would be a great idea. So an article turned into an ebook just so that I could answer this question completely for people who are really interested in it. I know that before we hit the road, I sat down with friends that did it and I had so many questions and they were so generous with their time in helping walk me through everything. Cause it can be very intimidating to figure out all the ins and outs. How am I going to have insurance? How am I going to get mail? How am I going to go to the doctor? There's just so many things. How am I going to work remotely? What does school look like? And so chapter by chapter, I lay out everything that you need to figure out, consider, you know, what things cost, like it's all there. And it's, it is, it's in a beautiful book. That's ebook. That's easy to read. It has beautiful pictures in it. And I, it's already helped a lot of people. And so I, I love that it's out there. So now when somebody asks me that loaded question, I can just give them this, here's the link. You need to get this book because it's going to lay out everything you need to know. That's awesome. Yeah. And we'll for sure link to that in the show notes as well for anyone that's interested or interested in passing it off to a family member. Uh, We all know you're very persuasive (laughs) talking people into joining on the road. Okay. So when you reflect back on Lauren before RV life, back when you were rushing kids around and, you know, both you and your husband were working and Lauren now that you've been living this lifestyle for what five years, what has changed? So much has changed. Um, old Lauren was very rigid. Um, if they, I was a planner and if things did not go how I planned them, that was very hard for me. And it caused a lot of stress. Rushing around everywhere caused me a lot of stress. It was hurting my body physically. Um, I was getting older and I was starting to like, my hips would hurt. I had neck pains and I just figured, Oh, I guess this is just part of getting older. But what it turns out is that it was stress. And once we hit the road and slow down and we're not rushing around everywhere, my, I was taking all these supplements for these pains and I ran out at one point because, and then I couldn't find them. And I realized, Oh my gosh, I, these pains have gone away. And I could just tell my whole demeanor was so much more relaxed 
And if you're an RVer, you know that things don't always, they usually don't go as planned in RV life. You have to be flexible and adaptable. And those are things that I didn't really learn until we hit the road. And it's made me a stronger person because of it. I feel so much more confident just in handling stress or handling tough situations because I've learned stressing out about things does no good. Like you have to roll with the punches and it has really relaxed me. And I've seen the changes like mentally, physically, in so many ways. It's just, um, we're all, I think, better, stronger people because of this lifestyle. I feel that a lot too, especially with the, the, first of all, the ability to not feel like you're in stressed out survival mode all the time, you know, and it's hard to describe that shift to people that are still living like kind of that American dream lifestyle (laughs) like we were in before where it's like I always felt like there was something I needed to do and someone I needed to email and like I don't even know like just food to order and a gift to buy for the event and the blah 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 but like it just felt like a constant like oh I can't just even when I was relaxing it's like I couldn't like truly relax I don't it's hard to describe and now that we live on the road and I mean, there's definitely stressors, but it's more like, I feel like I attack it more with, um, like, uh, let's just figure this out. Like we can do this. We just have to find the solution instead of like, Oh my God, I'm so stressed. That explains it perfectly. I feel the same exact way. Yeah. And, and over time when you, when you like kind of kick into that problem solving, you know, frame of mind over and over and over to me it's built up a lot of resilience because now i'm like oh we have a flat tire all right like here we go we've been to this already before and i know we'll find the answer um so it's it's good stuff it's like a shift that i didn't really anticipate on the road at all um and uh it's crazy how those kind of internal shifts happen (laughs) Uh, okay. So I have one more question for you and then I'll have you tell people where they can connect with you online. The slogan for this show is a podcast about unexpected riches. And I would love for you to share what's the unexpected richness that you have found from RV life. I have several. (laughs) I have a lot. I'll, I'll try to narrow it down. I mean, when we hit, when we went into this lifestyle, it was mainly just for personal reasons, like within our family, we want to reconnect as a family, we want to slow down. We did not expect how much we would be enriched by the people that we would meet along the way. We are very open people and very friendly people. And so we were so excited to meet other RVers. And once we sat around campfire after campfire, and heard their stories and how they had learned and grown and their experiences in life, it was just such an unexpected blessing that we had no idea was going to happen when we first hit the road. We have learned that other people have so much to give and to share if you just take the time to listen to them. And Mm -hmm. we have just grown and learned so much by being available and slowing down and spending time with the people that we're around every day. And, and those people change all the time. So we're just meeting so many people, which is just mind boggling how many stories we've heard and how many friends we've met. And it's been so, um, just so fulfilling that, and we didn't expect that. So I'll, I'll keep that as my one, uh, enrichment <laughs> thing. Cause that is probably the biggest and best one. Yeah. The community for sure. It's awesome. Uh, okay. I said that was the last question, but I actually have one more question. Do you like have, do you chart out like a year ahead? Like, do you know, can you tell us what's coming up over the next year for you and your family? I all, I'm the planner. I'm still the planner of the family and I always have an idea, but I'm flexible enough now in my life that I'm okay if that changes. So I know we're going to spend the fall in Southern California. And then the kids said, well, if we're already spending fall here, let's go ahead and have Christmas with family too. Cause we were going to go down to Mexico before Christmas. So we said, that's a great idea. So we're going to be in Southern California, general area, um, and through Christmas. Then after Christmas, we plan to go down to our property in Baja for January, February, and most of March. And then um, we're headed to Europe again. And so we will be in Europe. Uh, We're going to be in Portugal for 
April, May, and June. And then we're going to go visit my sister in Amsterdam after that. And then uh, who knows what's after that. We might stay uh, out. We might come back. I don't know. So I, I have at least through that planned. We'll store our RV in Southern California. So we will be flying back here to get the RV and then we'll assess uh, where to go next. Oh my gosh. That's so great. I am not that much of a planner and I'm like aspiring to be you someday. (laughs) (laughs) We have the next two weeks. Hooray. (laughs) Oh, that's so good. Okay. Will will you tell our listeners where they can connect with you online? So our website or our travel blog um, is where you can buy our ebook. It's where you can read a ton of articles about all the places we visit, um, products we enjoy, tips for RV life. And that's www.thewanderpreneurs.com. And then we're on all the social media channels. If you just at the dot wanderpreneurs, you can find us on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, YouTube. We're a lot of different places. So if you type in the wanderpreneurs, you're likely to see a lot of different places where you can find us. And also it makes sense. Now that I know your husband runs a marketing agency, I'm like, that name is brilliant. So (laughs) good job. Kudos to you guys. Cool. Well, thank you so much for being on the podcast today, Lauren. It was so fun to get to know you. (laughs) Thanks so much again for having me. It was great. Thanks for listening to the RV Queens podcast. If you would like to be on a guest on the show, click on the link in the show notes to the guest application. And if you would also please go ahead and subscribe to the channel and like the video, that would help us out a lot. Thanks a lot. And I will see you on the road. Oh my God, I'm so stressed.